Scrivener makes editing your book easy. It offers unrivaled tools and features to help you, but sometimes it's hard to understand how to use them if you don't see them in action. In this video, I'm going to show you some power tips that I've learned over the years that help me with editing. What's up guys, this is Michael Aran with Author Level Up, giving you the best tools and strategies for writing faster and reaching readers with your stories. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get new videos from me every week if you like this one. Let's jump right into Scrivener so I can show you how I edit my novels. All right, so we're here in Scrivener. We're looking at Dreamborn, book one in my Magic Tracker's urban fantasy series. Now, this book is published, but we'll pretend that this is the first draft of, of the novel and I'm ready to start editing. So now if you haven't seen my video on how to outline a novel in Scrivener, check that out for some useful tips. And if you're new to Scrivener, check out my Learn Scrivener video that will basically give you a crash course in everything that you need to know in less than 20 minutes. So we're ready to, to edit our novel. So I'm going to go through a number of features um, here that will certainly help you. So the first thing that you can do, and this is what I like to do, is I've got my outline here, and I want to be able to refer to my outline while I'm editing. So I can do that in one of two ways. The first way is I can take the outline and I can drag it into the bookmark tab or button, and then that it will be there for me whenever I need it. And so when I double click on it, it will pop up the outline in a quick reference window that I can move around as I see fit. Now another way and the best way to do this is if I go back to the manuscript is to use split screen mode. So if you click on this little button here then what I can do is pull up the outline at the bottom or if I hit the alt key and then click I can have them show up horizontally or vertically. So this is helpful uh, it's just I found it useful to have everything side by side. Now if I wanted to have multiple windows what I could do is I could hold the alt key and then drag into the editor window like that and do this again and I can get up to four, four windows concurrently at the same time. For most people I find that that's probably a little too busy but you may find that helpful. So that's split screen. And that's the copy holders feature, by the way, um, that will allow you to do that. So we'll close all these windows here. And we're back to one window. And what I want to show you next is the inspector. So we'll go back to the manuscript and we'll click on this little eye here that will bring up the inspector. And what I want to talk about first is a synopsis. So you certainly can enter a synopsis of each chapter, you know, and I recommend that you do this while you're writing. But for the purposes of this video, we'll say, uh, and then I'll go to chapter two and, and then I'll do another one for chapter three just for the sake of uh, you being able to show you something a little sooner here. The reason this is helpful is if you go to the cork board you'll see your book represented as index cards and your synopses will show up on the index cards, which I find very helpful. And if you wanted to, you could use the threaded corkboard mode. Um, I've only got one point of view character in this story, so there's only one thread, but if you had multiple characters, you, you could label those and, and tag those appropriately, and you could see those represented on different threads on the threaded corkboard. So moving through the inspector, back to it, I wanna show you a couple other things. So um, we talked about custom metadata, I, something I think is one of Scrivener's most flexible and powerful tools that I don't know that it's one of those tools that you hear about it and it's kind of like in one ear out the other at least that was what it was like with me like i i heard about it and people talk about it but i just couldn't visualize it and so i just didn't didn't use it because it didn't make sense to me so what's cool about custom metadata is custom metadata you're probably you're probably familiar with metadata in the sense that like on amazon or on barnes and noble it basically tells your tells the retailer what your book is about and so you enter keywords you know uses your book description all of that to help them place your book in the right category and recommend it to people in the algorithms and all that now that's not quite what scrivener's metadata will do but what what it will do is it will remind you what is in your book so you can basically create a skeleton of of what's in your book so if i were to go to custom metadata here and i wanted to create a lo location or if I wanted to create, um, well, we'll start with the location first. So 
if I go to outline mode here, you'll see that I've got the novel. So if you right click on this top bar, and then you'll see that the metadata that I added is down here. Now what I can do is I can type in the location where every chapter appears. Now here's another way you can use it. If I go back and I create another one, and let's say I want to tag all of the chapters that take place in a dream. So my heroine in this story is a dream mage. So she has the ability to travel into people's dreams. And traveling into dreams is a very important part of the story. So if I wanted to go through in, in editing and edit all of the chapters at the same time that take place in dreams to make sure that those chapters are consistent, what I could do is I could create a metadata sequence that has dream sequence. And then what I would do is that instead of text, I would change that to a checkbox. And so then what I could do is we'll go back in here and we'll activate it. And then I could simply check all of the chapters that take place in dreams. And then what I could do is if I click it, I can filter by those and sort it. I guess filter's not the right word, I can sort it. So that, that's really, really cool. So that's custom metadata, and that's something that can help you stay organized in your editing. Now, of course, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about labels. Um, I don't have any labels set up here, but typically the best way to do that is, is you know, labeling by the point of view character. If you've only got one point of view character, then you have, perhaps have to be a little bit more creative in terms of how you use that, should you choose to use it. And while you're editing, the status is also pretty important. Not something I use a whole lot, but certainly if you're editing, you can certainly um, decide and, and designate where in the process each chapter is. So that's custom metadata and outline mode that will help you. Now moving back to the inspector, I'm telling you the inspector is it just it's like a bucket full of goodies. So you go, you can use snapshots. Now I talk about this in pretty much all of my Scribner videos. Snapshots is like an insurance policy, right? So it takes a snapshot of your chapter. It's helpful because you don't have to revert back. You don't, you don't. It saves a snapshot of the chapter, but you don't have to revert back the entire project. So that's why that's helpful. Should you need to use your snapshot, certainly you can um, roll your series, roll your story back, or you, if you took multiple snapshots, you can compare those. Um, so that that's something I find useful because sometimes when I'm editing, I'm, I'm I want to know what I what I wrote in an earlier draft, or maybe I went down a different path and I maybe want to explore going back down that path in my next round of edits. So that's something that um, I have found to be immensely useful. Now, I do want to talk about comments as well. So uh, Scribner, you know, when you think about comments, they're similar to Microsoft Words, right? But they're not quite as powerful. But the benefit of Scribner comments is that they will appear in Microsoft Word should you choose to export them. So if I wanted to create a comment here based on Moon, and I could say I'll put a note to my editor or to myself, Right. If I export that to Microsoft Word, I can choose to have that show up in Word. So that's another effective thing. The way I use that is if I have something that I want my editor to take a look at or double check, I'll usually throw a comment in there. So that way, when I export this to Word and send it to her, she has that built in and I don't have to remember to go put it in there. All right, so we've hit on the inspector, we've hit on outline mode, we've hit on the cork board. What I want to talk about next is what I think is the most important tool that Scrivener offers to help you edit, and that's revision mode. So you can access revision mode by going to format, revision mode, and um, basically I will pick first revision. So now basically everything that I write will show up in a different color which is helpful because as you're looking at your novel, you can start to tell what when you wrote different pieces of it. So what shows up in red was your first draft, what shows up in blue was your second draft, and, and so on. And I, I think this is so helpful because it, when you're looking at a wall of text for hours and hours on end that's black and white, it's helpful to add some color to it. I, just, I think the color pops, and I think it's um, really, really useful. All right, so that's the first draft, and let's say that I want to write something else. And I can go back in and say I've finished all my edits. I'm ready to do my second revision. And then there you go. So you've got basically what I wrote first, what I wrote second, and then what I wrote third. Super cool. So revision mode can be helpful, and it's easy to remove all your revisions later on. So if I wanted to go in and remove all my revisions, I would just go to Format, 
and I would do remove current revision color and then or you could remove all revisions once you're done and you don't need it anymore and you're tired of looking at the colors very easy to just revert back so nothing you do in revision mode is by any means permanent now if I'm wanting to do edits that are more surgical in nature as I'm going through this certainly you can you know find things with control F so if I wanted to find every instance of the word magic you know I certainly could do that and if I wanted to replace it I certainly could do that as well another way you can search for things is to use the quick search bar up here click click on that search for it this will return any instance of the word magic in your entire project if you go to full project search it will you know represent that on the left hand side of your screen so that's another way to find things that maybe you, know, you change a character's name halfway through or you know maybe there's a detail that you're particularly looking for that you want to change that's how you make those surgical edits now I also want to talk about linguistic focus so let's say you've gone through your your novel once or twice and you're now you're just really focused on pacing and, and focused on word choice and just making sure everything pops so you, you're concerned about your any repeat words or you're concerned about anything that's going to affect the the readability of the novel I recommend you use linguistic focus so if you go to edit and then you go to writing tools linguistic focus this is I think this is the coolest feature ever in Scrivener so let's say I'm going to just want to look at all my dialogue yeah it will fade out everything else and it will highlight your dialogue and then you can choose you know if you if you the level of fade so let's just say I want to get rid of it entirely so now I can look at every instance of my dialogue. I think this is so cool. It's just in incredible. And so if you're wanting to get rid of adverbs, certainly you can do that. Now I found it's not entirely accurate sometimes, um, but for the most part, it's going to be pretty accurate. Um, you can look at any instance of prepositions. So one thing I'm infamous for, you know, in my first drafts is I tend to do double prepositions for whatever reason I don't know why if I wanted to look for that since I know that's a quirk that I have I would just simply look for any instance where I have prepositions two, two times in a row so linguistic focus is super helpful um, definitely something you should consider and, and get in the habit of using it's a new feature with Scrivener 3 that I think um, a lot of people will will really enjoy and of course I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about uh, full screen mode so if we go into full screen mode uh, it certainly gives you a darker background and sometimes I find it just helps to change things up, change the color, change the, the size of the page that you're working on, it just helps you see things a little bit more fresh. And um, you, know, you can use full screen mode to do that. So we're gonna hit escape, go back to the regular mode. And I'll talk about one other tool that's helpful sometimes. So if I, sometimes when I'm editing, I think it's helpful to have the story be read to me. So, you know, sometimes people will read their story out loud. Sometimes that helps them uh, catch errors and identify flow issues. Um, but Scribner will actually read your story to you. So all you have to do is right click on, right click and highlight, and then go to speech, and then simply start speaking. Pro magic tip, demons always show up when you least expect them. As I shoveled a barrier of snow in front of my shop, three of them appeared on the roof roaring against the wintry moon. All right, so I, I think that's that's pretty helpful. So those are just some basic tips to help you edit your novel in Scrivener. You may find yourself using all of them. You may find yourself using only a few of them. Um, the ones that I find myself using regularly are the corkboard, outline mode, revision mode, and linguistic focus, and speech mode. Use what works for you. I hope this video gave you some tips that you can use to edit your book. I'd love to hear any editing tips that you have when working with Scrivener. Be sure to post them in the comments so others in the community can see them and learn as well. And don't forget to watch the rest of the videos in the Scrivener Essential series for more tips on becoming a Scrivener Power user. And if this is your first time watching, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I publish videos just like this one with writing and marketing advice to help you write better and grow your influence with readers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.